so is it successful anyone yes, tried successful. tried fail over and all fail back the resources anyone tried guys okay just i installed a sql server sir on on both the nodes yes sir okay okay then fine no issues अप्लीकेशन Then, then again, only same record insert test again. Now, after that, undistributed commands will only be available, sir. Yes, 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 sir. Uh, your replication will stop working guys okay so this is the common issue with the developers whenever uh, we'll will use it to, we, we are going to say like please don't insert any records from subscriber side still developers mm-hmm. don't listen to us developers at least one developer will keep inserting records from subscriber side so your replication will be stop working okay so this mm-hmm. is the main challenge so what we have to do for that Again, you sir, it to... is very difficult, does no, sir, to find out which record you no, have. Correct, correct. See, for me, yeah, sir. Yes, yesterday, yes. I took an uh, almost half of the day. Mm. I have to insert with the pre- same primary key, and which record has I forgot to. No, the, um, yes, sir. Which the record? The transaction I replication. You don't get that issue right? because in the transaction replication, of course, in the transaction replication also, if you insert another record, you will get that issue. Okay, but if you insert from subscriber side. usually your replication will stop working guys okay the simple thing okay. is if you are trying mm-hmm. to insert any records from the subscriber side your replication will be stopped working okay so developers don't listen to us they will keep on adding records from subscriber side even though they know but they by mistake they will add it okay so in that case your replication will be stopped working so what you have to do for that you have to select the data consistency errors continue on data consistency errors guys okay okay yeah. So, Amin, okay, if you sir. can't figure, no problem. Amin, if you can't figure Windows clustering, guys, can you hear me now? My voice is clear or it's too low? No, sir, it's clear only for me. Right. Okay, okay, it's clear. Right, right. So, Amin, if you can't figure SQL clustering, guys, Divya. Yes, sir. So yesterday, have you created that SQL clustering? Since you have an issue, right? Yesterday. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No. Yes, sir. So it was completed SQL clustering. No, sir. Only Windows clustering. Sir. Only Windows clustering is completed. Okay, okay. Done, done. Today, will do, sir. Okay, okay. Guys, the videos also shared. Yes, this videos also shared. So nothing pending. I have to share the notes. Okay, I'll share the notes also today, and nothing pending from my side, guys. Tomorrow we'll plan for some speaker series. Okay. So three people, right? Raised hands. Can you please raise again? I'll, I'll give you some reward points. Those who completed SQL clustering, please raise your hands. Okay, Anuj, Swati, Madhvi, and Rama Priya, right? Okay.
Okay, Subhani, very good. So guys, tell me guys now, so when you fill over the resources, okay, or when you fill over the cluster aware application, so what and all resources will go offline first and what resources will come online first from the secondary node? IP addresses and then shared. Can anyone tell me what are the cluster aware applications in SQL Server? Cluster aware applications. Engine. Uh... SQL Server uh, agent. CIP service. What is when by cluster aware application first of all? No one answered, guys. My last question. No one answered. Anu's answered for offline agent something. Charan answered IP address network name, SQL server, SQL agent, SQL C IP service. Anu is okay. Swati. Okay, fine. So what is meant by cluster aware application, guys? What is meant by cluster aware application? Cluster aware cluster. Instance and aware cluster, instance and aware, yes. you know, right? Yes, sir. Sorry. Sorry. What is meant by cluster aware? What is the meaning of cluster? Which applications participate in the cluster. Very good. Okay. Which which applications, which components you can install on the cluster setup? Okay. Which components we have database engine, agent, uh, okay, uh, browser service, okay, and CEIP service, and full text service, and uh, analysis services, reporting services, integration services. These are all, these are all our SQL Server components, right? SQL Server components. So in these components, what and all components you can install on cluster setup? Can we configure cluster setup on, I mean, can we install uh, clustering on all these components or only some components will support us to participate in the cluster setup? Only some, some sir. CIP, yeah. engine, C Okay, so this is the assignment for tomorrow. What and all cluster aware applications? Cluster aware applications are there related to the SQL Server, not other components. Okay, what are cluster aware services or application or services? Both are fine. Cluster aware services, cluster unaware services. Okay, what are cluster aware services? Cluster unaware SQL services. You just check and let me know. Okay, let me open. Uh, Fluidmin.msc. Any questions from clustering side, guys? Any questions from clustering side? Okay, so dependency report. What is the dependency report? They can ask the question like this also. What is the dependency report in SQL Server? What resources are depends on what resources? Architecture of Clustering. Mm. What is the dependency report? SQL Server instance depends on a SQL Server CAP instance and then the agent. And mm -hmm. then shared address will depend on a SQL Server instance. And okay. then IP address will depend on a network name. Mm -hmm. Network name depends on IP address. Okay. okay. Uh, like this, it will be SQL Server agent CEIP services. Yes, yes, yes will depends on SQL Server Database Engine. SQL Server Database Engine under condition and your network and, name yeah. and all the shared yeah, right. yes, Your sir. network name depends on your cluster IP address. <laughs> Windows cluster IP address. I mean, SQL cluster IP address, sorry. 
it's taking time, okay. Right. Today we'll complete clustering and we'll start always on guys. We'll try to configure always on also today. I'll take half an hour extra today. And today is holy. Okay. Let's go for extra session, guys. And today I'll try to configure AG. And uh, in the next class, we'll discuss about AG, how to monitor AG and all, how to fail our AG groups. We'll discuss in the next class. And we'll start the performance tuning, guys. Tomorrow we'll go for some speaker series, okay? Uh, on Sunday, whether class is there or not, I'll, I'll update you by tomorrow evening, okay? okay. Yeah. In case if anything, sir, pending, I have to take class on, um, guys, all you are going to be available on evening time, guys. Evening yes, time, same yes, time. Sir. Evening, same time, everyone will be available. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If anyone is having any issues, same timing, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, let me know if anyone having any issues. No, sir. Let's see, okay. I'll, I'll plan some evening sessions, okay. Let's see, it depends upon your availability, we'll, we'll go for evening sessions also. Right, okay. So here, if you go to your primary node, this is my primary node, right? Uh, come on. This is my primary node, right? Please mute it. Uh, yeah. So uh, here, you have to learn two things, guys. Two important things are there, okay? Uh, preferred owner and possible owner, guys. Preferred owner, possible owner. What? Please mute it. What is meant by preferred owner? What is meant by possible owner? Okay. So we'll discuss those things. Okay, done. Muted you all. In case of any questions, please unmute and let me know. Right. So what is the preferred owner? What is possible owner? Okay, let's discuss, guys. If I click on the SQL server and if I go to the resources, where I can see the preferred and possible owners, I'll show you. And what is the use of this preferred and possible owner also we'll discuss, okay? So usually... Preferred owner means, okay, uh, let me explain with the diagram. All right. This is my primary node. Okay. This is my secondary node, guys. Imagine there is no Amazon application. Okay. Imagine there is no Amazon. As of now, imagine there is no Amazon application. Or else, imagine Amazon application is there. We have two applications. Okay. Our single application also concept is same, guys. Right. RAM. Okay, so and CPU. Let me go with another RAM. So every server will have its own RAM, right? Agree? Every server will have its own RAM yes. CPU. Every server will have its own CPU also. Yes. Right. Right, okay. So if you see here, this is my node one, guys. Imagine I want to use node one as preferred owner for my Flipkart application. Means 90% your Flipkart database server has to be run from your node one only. So what I did, I just allocated, okay, Flipkart application, right? Very big application, right? 256 GB RAM. Okay, I just allocated 256 GB RAM for my Flipkart database servers and 64 core CPU. Right, 64 core CPU. 256 GB RAM, control X. Okay, okay, let's, let's go like this, control V.
right okay so my node 1 contains okay 256 gb ram 64 core cpu guys it's not mandatory that your secondary nodes also should have same ram and same okay uh, cpu you can go with a different structure also okay so imagine uh, this is configured with a 128 gb ram okay and 128 gb ram and 32 core cost saving guys cost saving okay listen carefully it's very simple okay 32 core why because i know that node 1 is the preferred owner okay 90 percentage your sql server has to be up and running from node 1 only only node 2 will act as a standby guys whenever you are doing some maintenance activities on node 1 whenever node 1 is suddenly down okay then your secondary will act as a standby node agree guys everyone so as it is a standby what i am going to do i'll i'll use less resources right 128 gb ram 32 core i am just giving sample uh, numbers guys sample figures in the organization same kind of stuff will be there or different numbers will be there different ram different cpu cores and all say for example you are using a two sims right so what you are going to do one sim of course you are going to recharge with unlimited plan right 430 or 440 450 something is there another sim you will recharge monthly plan right just incoming and outgoing 80 rupees or 90 rupees agree guys you don't want to recharge your two sims with unlimited plans agree yes sir why because we are not using the yes, correct what is the use of unlimited plans on both the sims one sim is enough right to talk another sim of course nowadays if we don't recharge the number is going to be deactivated so of course it's mandated to recharge with a minimum pack of 79 rupees or 120 rupees just for incoming and outgoing purpose we are going to recharge means cost saving guys agree in the same our preferred sim is sim one all the calls outgoing calls and all you are going to do from your sim one guys so sim two will act as a standby sim that's why you don't recharge sim two with a unlimited pack again why because same unlimited pack is there on your sim one at a time you don't use both the sims to call right so no need to recharge both your sims with unlimited packs you are going to do some cost saving in the same way my preferred node is node one my application has to be up and running from node one only that is my preferred node for flipkart application so what i'm going to do i'll give extra ram and extra cpu for my preferred node whenever i'm doing patching whenever i'm whenever the server is down due to some issues technical issues or power gone or that the data center crashed something happened okay whenever that issue is there like now ukraine war is there okay imagine your data center is there in the ukraine okay russia has attacked with a missile on the data center suddenly your data center is down your network something happened something happened to the network cables suddenly your data center is down so if we if we keep both the servers in the same data center that's it there is no standby for you so what you are going to do one data center you will keep in the ukraine and another data center will keep it in some other location so this is how they will plan the uh, disaster guys okay this is how they will plan the disaster in case of disasters how you are going to plan your standbys okay so they don't keep in the same building they don't keep it in the same country they will keep it in the separate countries and all primary they will keep it in separate countries second they will keep it in separate countries so like that they are going to manage especially he and dr machines they are going to manage like that okay so in the same way whenever the machine is down of course until this node one is up and running until then your application will be up and running from node two guys okay once this node one is back again your application they will fail back the application to node one is it clear so preferred node there will be a preferred owner for every application okay that means on that node we have enough cpu and enough memory guys we have sufficient resources are there on the other node you may not have sufficient resources so definitely when i fail over from preferred owner to next possible owner definitely you will experience performance issues or not why because to run your sql server flipkart sql server you should need 256 gb 
64 core CPU. But unfortunately, your primary is down. So you just did fail over to the secondary. So earlier, the Flipkart application is going to use 256 GB. Now, as, you, as it is running from uh, Node 2, Node 2 is having 128 GB and 32 core only, half of the resources are less. So definitely you will experience performance issues or not. Yes, sir. So this is one of the reason in case if you are experiencing performance issues, like if your query is running slow, if any customer complaints like my query is running slow, my application is running slow, or whenever I'm executing any, any stored procedure, it's taking a lot of time, our jobs are running slow. So this is one reason. Check whether your SQL server is up and running from your preferred owner or not. It has to be up and running from preferred owner only. Then only you don't get performance related issues, guys. Why? Because earlier it is used to consume 256 GB RAM, 64 CPU. Now it is trying to utilize the 128 GB RAM, 32 CPU, which is not sufficient for my Flipkart. Definitely you can experience the performance issues, guys. Same if it is one application. Imagine two applications are there. Okay. Two applications are there. Flipkart and Amazon. Amazon can use 128 and 32 GB is fine for Amazon. Amazon can utilize 128 GB, 32 GB. Okay. Something happened to my Node 2. I did just, I, I did the failover to Node 1. So this Amazon is running from Node 1 this time. So actually how much RAM is needed? 256 plus 128 RAM is needed, right? 256 for Flipkart for Amazon 128. Total how much RAM you need? 256, 356 plus 20, 376 plus 8, 384. Right, yes, sir. but we have only 256 GB RAM. Earlier, only 256 GB RAM is going to be utilized by Flipkart. Now the same 256 GB RAM is going to be utilized by Flipkart and Amazon. Definitely will feel a uh, performance issues, right? Agree? So whenever you do the failover, definitely you are going to, definitely you are going to face the issues, guys. Okay, you will, uh, your application might be slow. Is it clear preferred owner, possible owner? Okay. And yesterday, not yesterday, while, while uh, uh, when we are discussing, when we are started discussing the clustering, I said we are going to support 27 node cluster, but we don't use all 27 nodes for single application. I just opened an Excel sheet. Uh, okay. For one application, node one, node two, node three. These three are possible owners, guys. Okay. Means I can fail over or it will be automatically fail over to only these three nodes. Even though you have 27 nodes in the cluster setup, it won't go to fourth node, fifth node. Why? Because four and five, fifth nodes are not possible owners. Agree? Yes. Clear, guys? Yes. Again, do I want do, do you want me to explain with the Excel sheet? Possible owner. Possible owners means whenever you are doing the failover, it will check whether other two nodes are there in the possible owners list or not. How many nodes are there in the possible owner list? Imagine I have five node cluster set up. You can include all five nodes in the possible owners. Means node one is down, it will go to node two, node two is down, it will go to node three, node three is down, node four, node four is down, node five. But in the five node cluster setup, you just added one, two, three nodes as a possible owners for my flip card. So if my node one is down, it will go to node two. If node two is down, it will go to node three. If node three is down, it, it won't go to node four or you don't. You cannot manually fail out to node 4. Why? Because node 4 is not in the possible owners list. It can be used for other applications, node 4 and node 5. It is going to switch between node 1 to node 3 only, guys. Why? Because node 1 to node 3 are in the possible owners list. Node 4 and node 5 are not in the possible owners list. Definitely. Okay. You cannot fail over. Okay. I'll show you guys. Nothing to worry. I'll show you. Demo. Okay. So let's go to the Windows machine. One, two, three, right? So if you see, these are my resources, right? So where I can see preferred owner, right click here, guys, right click here, go to properties, go to failover, guys, I'm sorry, here only. Here you can see, as of now, I haven't set any preferred owner, possible owner and all, okay? You can see preferred owners, okay? Preferred owners, B42 node one, B42 node two, okay? Imagine I just set, I want to set B42 node 2 as a preferred owner. Select this node, click up. Which node is up? That is your preferred owner, guys. 
apply okay now tell me whether my sql server is running on preferred owner or not tell me guys let me go to the properties node 2 is my preferred owner and it is running on which node guys node 1 node 1 here also you can see owner node or here also you can see running on node 1 means my flipkart application is not running on preferred owner agree yes. so this check you have to check in case if anyone is complaining about performance issues what is the preferred <laughs> owner whether it is running from preferred owner or not don't do any changes guys don't do any changes if it is not running from preferred owner usually when when anyone configured clustering setup sql clustering setup uh, depends upon the manager instructions okay or those who configured the sql clustering they will set this whether node 2 is preferred owner or node 1 is preferred owner they will set it guys depends upon the build sheet in the build sheet they will mention which one should be preferred owner they will they will include in the build sheet so if anyone configured sql clustering they will set up the preferred owner and possible owners guys if it is not running from preferred owner don't change the preferred owners list keep the preferred owners as it is try to fail over guys it is not it is not running from node 1 what is the preferred owner node 2 but it is running from node 1 what i have to do what is the solution for this i have to simply fail over to node 2 guys agree but don't change this, don't change this list why because you can change here node 1 to node 2 node 2 to node 1 but you cannot change the resources right ram cpu and all agree guys Yes, sir. Is it clear, everyone? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, it is showing one minute. Please reconnect again. Yes, sir. 